Hey, well, hey, everybody, Mr. Reeves back with you, and today we're going to be looking at linear non proportional relationships. So, we have been studying for quite a while now proportional relationships, and we don't usually put the word linear in front of proportional relationships, and the reason is because all proportional relationships are linear. All proportional relationships are linear. However, non proportional relationships, non proportional relationships can be linear or they can be non linear. So, we're going to be focusing for now on linear non proportional relationships. And that sounds really scary. Those are some big words, but I think you will see very soon that it's really not that bad at all. All right, and I'm going to introduce this idea of linear non-proportional relationships using one of my favorite problems, which is Jake's ballistic bowling problem. Jake's ballistic bowling problem. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and read the problem right now. It says, Jake and his friend Aaron go bowling at three strikes a bowling alley. Three strikes charges $3 per game played and $2 to rent shoes. Jake rents shoes, but Aaron has his own, so he doesn't have to pay for his shoes. And it goes on to tell us that X is going to represent the number of games played and Y is going to represent the total cost, and they are going to play uh, five games. All right? So let's take a look at what's going on here and investigate these linear relationships, one of which is going to turn out to be proportional and one which is going to be non-proportional. All right, so we have right here $3 per game. So this is the first thing that's really important to us, for us to understand. All right, everyone bowling pays $3 per game. In addition, if you do not have your own shoes, you have to pay $2 to rent shoes. When you go bowling, they don't let you bowl in street shoes. You must either have your own special bowling shoes or you must rent theirs. All right. So Aaron has his own shoes. Aaron has his own shoes, but Jake has to rent shoes. All right, so that means Jake is going to have to pay that $2. Now, it's not $2 per game. It's $2 once. So you go up to the desk, you pay for the shoes, you bowl, and then when you're done, you pay based on how many games you have uh, played. All right, all right, or is it how many games you've rolled? I'm not quite sure what you say with bowling, all right, but we will just go on from here and not worry about that. So let's start with Aaron. Remember, Aaron was the one. Aaron has his own, okay? So he is not renting shoes. So for Aaron right here, if he uh, bowls zero games, then he pays zero dollars. Does that make sense? Zero games is zero dollars. Now, the first game he plays is going to cost him three dollars. And then the second one, now remember, this is the total cost here, right? So we have that first game was three and the second game was three. So the total cost is three plus three or six. All right. Three games is going to be nine. Four games is going to be 12. And five games is going to be 15. All right. So if I were to ask you, is this a proportional relationship? Does y divided by x equal the same thing every time? The answer is yes. Okay, so this would be a proportional relationship. And if I were to say, okay, so it's proportional, what's the value of k? Well, you could take any of these points, if it's proportional, any of them except, of course, 0, 0, because you can never divide by 0. And whether I do 3 divided by 1 or 6 divided by 2 or 9 divided by 3 or 12 divided by 4 or 15 divided by 5, I'm going to get 3 every time, which, of course, makes sense because it's $3 per game with no extra cost. So Aaron's equation, remember the equation for a... A uh, proportional relationship is y equals kx. So Aaron's equation is going to be y equals 3x, right? Does that make sense? y is equal to 
x. All right, so if I were then to make a graph, because remember, you can represent a proportional relationship in words. You can represent it on a table. You could represent it with an equation, and you could represent it with a graph. So this is going to be my 0 and 0. And I'm going to go ahead and skip every other line down here just because I like to spread it out. Since we're only going to go up to 5, right, we can do every other line. And this one, I'm going to go by 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This is going to be 5 right here. Okay. 6, 7, 8, 9. This is going to be 10. Okay. 11, 12, 13, 14. This is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And then that up there would be 20 if we got there. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and plot these points for Aaron, and I'm going to use red since that's what I used to fill it in. So zero games was zero dollars. One game was one, two, three. Two games was one, two, three, four, five, six. Three games was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Four games was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12 and 5 games is going to go up 3 more. There's 12, 13, 14, 15, right? All right, and if I were to connect those with the line, I'm going to go ahead and make it a dash line because you can't play part of a game. Actually, you can play part of a game, but they're not going to charge you for part of a game. So that line right there, that line right there, is the line with the equation y equals 3x. And if I were to ask you what's the slope of that line, take a look. It goes up 3 and over 2. Now you're going to wait, wait. Up 3 over 2, but it's actually over 1, right? Because with this is 1. So up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So it has a slope of 3. Remember that right there? That is our value of k. And in a proportional relationship, k is equal to the slope. It's also the unit rate. Okay, So all of this, all of this for Aaron, should look familiar with what we've already done. This is how proportional relationships work. You're multiplying by a constant. All right, It's not always an integer. It might be a fraction. right? could be a decimal. All right, But in this case, it's simply 3. And you get a straight line that goes through the origin with the slope being the same as that constant of proportionality. Again, up 3 over 1 is really what we're doing. Maybe I should have not have skipped a space after all. But you guys understand that two spaces is 1 in this case. It's good to know because scales can change all the time. All right, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. All right, that is Aaron. But what about Jake? Well, let me switch to a different color for Jake. Jake, unlike Aaron, does not have his own shoes, poor fella. He has to rent shoes. So when he goes, before he has even rolled that ball down the alley one time, right, it's going to cost him $2. $2 just to rent the shoes, right? He rents the shoes, gets a call from his mom. His mom says he has to come home. He paid $2 for the shoes once you put them on your feet. They don't want them back without you paying, right? And then they spray that Lysol in for the next person. All right, here we go. Next, we have next we have one game. What if he plays one game? Well, that's going to add $3 to the $2 that he's already paid. Again, remember, this is total cost here. So the total cost is going to be 5 because we had to do the 2 plus the 3. Then he plays another game. Well, that's going to cost three more dollars. So now we're at eight, right? And then it's going to cost three more dollars. That puts us at 11. Three more puts us at 14. And finally, three more puts us at 17. Now, if I were to ask you, does this form a proportional relationship? Does y divided by x equal a constant? All right, so I'm going to put a question mark right there. Well, let's take a look. This one works great, right? 5 divided by 1 is 5. So far, so good. But then if I do 8 divided by 2, what happens? I get 4. 
I got a different number. 3 doesn't even go into 11 evenly, nor does 4 go into 14 or 5 go into 17 equally. You'll notice when I divide y by x, I don't get a constant. So guess what? This one is non-proportional. There is no constant of proportionality. It is non-proportional. All right. Now, does that mean it doesn't make a straight line? Well, let's take a look. If we plot these points, instead of 0, 0, we have 0, 2, right? And then 1 is at 5, right? And then 2 is at, well, there's 5, right? 6, 7, 8. And then 3 is at, well, hey, wait, that's 9, 10, 11, you know what? I could just go two above each of these points, can't I? All right? Because you see, compare these. Zero goes to two. Three goes to five. Six, eight. These blue ones are always just too bigger, right? It's always just two more. And why is that? Because the cost of the games is the same. It's just that poor Jake had to pay that extra $2 there, right? And so now if I make a line going through these points right here, what do you see? Wow, those lines are parallel. They're parallel. They have the same slope. And if I count from this point to this point, up three over, and again, that's two boxes, but it's one, right? Up three over one, up three over one, up three over one. So, it is non-proportional, but it is what? It is linear non-proportional. So it makes a straight line. It has the exact same slope. It's just it doesn't go through 0, 0. It goes through 0, 2. It's like I took, I took Aaron's line and I simply shifted it up 2, right? Up 2. Do you see how we went up 2 that way, right? And it's up 2 that way. So in other ways, it's the same. If I looked at the change in y over the change in x, if we look at the slope on the table, right, what's the change in y right there? 3. What's the change in x right there? 1. What's the change in y right there? 3. What's the change in x right there? 1. So it has the same change in y over change in x, but the difference is if I actually do y divided by x on this one, I get 3, and on this one, I don't. None of these, when I divide y by x, give me that constant of proportionality. Okay? So that's how it works. Now, what about the equation? All right? What about the equation? Now, we know that Aaron's equation is y equals 3x, right? And we know that all of the points that Jake has are higher by 2. So if they were the same, what would Jake's equation be? It would be 3x, right? And that would make them the same. But what do I have to do every time? Every time I have to add 2. So what is Jake's equation? y equals 3x plus 2. That is still the slope, right? Only now, instead of using k, we're going to use m because it's no longer k. And we're going to be talking about that number right there. It gets its own special name, but I'll keep you in suspense what we're going to call that. Okay? So, real quick, a proportional relationship, a proportional relationship is going to look like y equals kx. And a non-proportional but linear relationship is going to look at y equals mx. And that number at the end, we're going to call b. y equals mx plus b. So it looks the same at the beginning, but we have something added, or it could be subtracted at the end. And we're not allowed to use k anymore, because k is only if it's proportional. So we use m. Now, m and k, if the slopes are the same, m will equal k, like in this case. But they're not the same thing when one's proportional and one's not. All right. Well, I hope this helps you understand. Initially, this is we're just scratching the surface, as they say, of linear non-proportional relationships. They form straight lines. That's why they're called linear. But they won't go through zero, zero. 
and y divided by x will not be a constant anymore. All right, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time.